good morning all so today we will be discussing the second uh, test questions and answers pertaining to economy regarding uh, prelims perspective so the first question which we are going to discuss now is the the reserve bank of india acts as a bankers bank this would imply which of the following one other banks retain their deposits with rba to the rba lends funds to commercial banks in times of need three rba advises the commercial banks on monetary matters so select the correct answers using the codes below so here you should understand that bankers what does what is the role of a bank bank is something which lends money as well as which takes back money or which collects deposits and at the same time it lends money so that's the primary role of a bank so in the same manner when it comes to bank for example if you go to bank bank never advises you on how to do your business or how to like uh, do uh, how to really follow or how to take decisions on monetary matters so coming to the same logic here so other banks retain their deposits with rbi that is true at the same time rbi lends that's why there is repo and reverse repo rate so rbi lends funds to commercial banks in times of need when there is liquidity crunch commercial banks uh, like lend money from rbi and pays interest so the third thing rbi never advises commercial banks on monetary terms and it is not the role of a bank so it doesn't fit into this logic of bankers bank so answer is only 1 and 2 that is nothing but b okay so answer to first question is b next thing under which of the following circumstances may capital gains arise please understand that capital gains is nothing but a kind of a scenario where let us assume you purchase any kind of a capital asset or any kind of an instrument or any kind of land or anything so that is something in the see for example if you are purchasing uh, if someone is into the trade of business means selling and purchasing goods so that comes under stock selling and purchasing goods or services goods or goods or services whatever you trade or whatever you do for the sake of business or trade okay it comes under the nature of so it doesn't come under the nature of investment or this is not investment because every day these goods or services are being uh, traded this is nothing but your stock whether it is something uh, some services are intangible stock whereas goods are tangible stock that comes under stock so stock never comes under so uh, stock is not something for the purpose of investment because every day day in and day out you trade as well as you sell and purchase when it comes to capital assets like land okay holding uh, shares for long term shares for long term or investment or like you purchase any valuable asset valuable asset and like you are able to like uh, hold it or you are able to like uh, keep it or invest it for long term these are all kind of things for long term for example someone some any like any real estate businessman or any real estate company or any kind of construction company which is buying and selling land it it doesn't come under like investment purpose it also land also comes under stock or land also comes in under the part of business such things doesn't or such things never come under the category of capital gains we will be seeing capital gains only from the perspective of investment or like holding it for considerable amount of time holding the asset for consider considerable considerable time okay 
this is what the main concept of capital gains now with that logic let us come to these things where there is an increase in sale of a product see when there let us assume gold simple logic gold an individual has purchased gold and kept it there kept it in his locker for one year or two years let us assume as naturally gold prices increase every year and uh, on long term basis definitely this is for investment purpose but let us assume a jeweler is there jeweler every day he buys and sells gold it never comes under the capital gain scenario it comes under the trade or business so it comes under stock so when there is an increase in the sale of a product it comes under the stock category so it is never part of capital gains okay because it is not for the product is not for the purpose of investment it is for the purpose of business or trade and it is a form of good or service okay so first thing doesn't fit into this category so coming to second thing when there is a natural increase in the value of property owned so that means you are owning a property and you are keeping it for a while like in the case of land value had increased so it comes under the category of increase in value of the asset which you have invested so that is nothing but capital gain so second one also so second one is correct coming to when you purchase a painting and there is a growth in its value due to the increase in popularity see because whatever painting you are purchasing also it is nothing but you are keeping and uh, you are keeping it as a valuable asset either for investment purpose or for long term purpose so definitely th this also comes under this category of so only 2 and 3 are correct but not 1 2 3 okay that's what second answer to second question is so third one which of the following measures would result in an increase in the money supply in the economy so how money supply could be enhanced first thing purchase of government securities from the public by central bank the moment central bank is purchasing government securities that is nothing but it is absorbing all the available liquidity or money supply in the economy so first one is doesn't fit into the category coming to the second thing deposit of currency in commercial banks by the public see the moment so the so the moment someone is depositing money sorry sorry see here uh, i take my i am misunderstood it is purchase of government securities from the public i misunderstood as purchase of government securities by public it is not by it is from the public that is nothing but government is buying the securities from the public that is nothing but government buys securities in return to public government gives cash cash or transfer of money whatever so government is giving back money to public so that means it increases it increases supply and money so first thing so first question is uh, uh, first one is correct coming to the second point deposit of currency in commercial banks by the public the moment someone is depositing money in commercial bank that means commercial banks are absorbing the liquid so it it like it decreases the money supply in the economy so second one is wrong third one is borrowing by the government from the central bank the moment government is borrowing from the central bank that means government will spend that money in one manner or other automatically it leads to an enhanced money supply so third one is also correct coming to fourth one sale of government securities to the public by central bank so i misunderstood for the, this one with this thing so the thing is 
rather than purchase now government securities are being sold by to the public by central bank that means central bank like is uh, like selling uh, securities to public selling securities and absorbing money so definitely it squeezes money supply so only answer is 1 and 3 nothing nothing but c that's what answer to question 3 is coming to fourth one the price of any currency in international market is decided by so what are the factors or who determines the price of any currency in international market first one is wrong so why because old bank in no way like old bank in no way determines the value of the currency that is a straight away so you can eliminate first one so first one is wrong so coming to demand of goods and services provided by the country so definitely goods and services provided by the country will determine the availability of dollar or any kind of uh, like inter recognized international currency because the moment there is a demand for goods and services provided by the country concerned like in the case of uh, china or uh, china is a packet exchange leave it as it like in the case of india if we are able to sell more goods or more uh, commodities automatically we will be flush with more dollars automatically that means our rupee will uh, strengthen and dollar will weaken so demand for goods and services by the provided by the country is uh, correct next thing stability of the go government of the concerned country so definitely stability also determines because the moment there is no stability automatically hot money like fis okay definitely hot money like fis will uh, like fly from that particular country leading to huge stress and pressure on forex so definitely that is also one thing which impacts so two and three and coming to fourth one fourth one you can't completely discard because economic economic potential of the country in question so definitely economic potential will also attract like definitely it attracts investments because a country like uh, for example take the case of india and pakistan india and afghanistan so india definitely india and afghanistan are having uh, both are having economic potential one is in the case of india is having robust service base <coughs> whereas a country like afghanistan has huge amount of mines and some petroleum reserves definitely there is economic potential for both the countries in question but afghanistan currency is very very weak when compared to indian rupee the reason is the stability of the government of the concerned country matters a lot so weighing the options between three and four that's how it is given see given an option of two three and four let us assume there is an option of two three and four definitely we should opt for two three and four because economic potential also attracts forex to an extent but given the weight is between three and four your priority should be given to three because that's how options are so i will be eliminating four also the answer is two and three nothing but b okay coming to next thing the basic aim of lead bank scheme is that a big bank should try to open offices in each district see the basic aim of lead bank scheme is that every bank should adopt one district so that they will give more loans on priority basis in that district especially for agri and agri related commodities uh, agri related sectors so that there will be inclusive development at the same time there will be robust growth of funds and other aspects so so the basic aim of lead bank scheme is that one big bank should try to open offices in each district that is wrong there should be stiff competition among various nationalized banks wrong 
individual banks should adopt particular district for intensive development this is uh, correct all banks should make intensive efforts to mobilize deposits this is wrong so answer to the thing is c c is the correct answer like the logic we had discussed so uh, answer to fifth question is c coming to sixth one which of the following can be said to be essential parts of inclusive governance one is permitting non banking finance companies to do banking definitely nbfcs will give loans at an easier pace and at a broader pace uh, broader uh, manner when compared to banks because the norms are less even though interest rate is higher the kind of coverage they like they play a complementary role to what banks does uh, what banks does so that is why first question, uh, first option is correct come to second thing establishing effective planning committees in all districts and rural areas definitely it it will also enhance or it will also promote inclusive growth because planning committees are uh, like planning discussions will give correct picture where they should focus in what sectors to bring everyone on to the path of development so second one is also correct next is increasing government spending on public health definitely it is a it is one of the most important things that should be encouraged why because out of pocket expenditure as of today from public is around 70% when compared to other countries because we are not spending properly on public health so that is also one thing which has to be focused completely so three is also correct next thing strengthening mid day meal scheme definitely mid day meal scheme strengthening will ensure two things one is improvisation of improvisation of uh, nutrition value or nutritional aspect at the same time government can also promote uh, uh, like enrollment of children in the schools so that even education could be important leading to further development of people so four both 1 2 3 and 4 are correct next thing seventh question which of the following statements are true post demonetization as of today the quantum of cash available in circulation has decreased when compared to pre demonetization so please understand that this is a factual question and you should be aware of these things also pre demonetization or during demonetization just before demonetization the available cash in the entire economy is around 15 lakh crores so that is the quantum of cash that was being circulated during that time but coming to the present scenario the quantum of cash that is like being circulated in the economy is now hovering around 29 to 30 around 28 to 29 lakh crores that means almost the available cash in the economy has doubled so it is not that it has decreased so first question is wrong next thing post demonetization the circulation and unearthing of fake indian currency notes by law enforcement agencies have come down see the one of the major reasons for uh, demonetization as stated by government was to decrease the spread and uh, distribution and circulation of fican or fake indian currency notes but according to ncrb data post demonetization the amount of fake currencies that have been seized had doubled so this is this is also wrong so answer is none of the above coming to eighth question at present the cost to produce a kg of hydrogen gas from renewable sources is is far lower when compared to from non renewable sources this is wrong because the cost to produce a kg of hydrogen gas from renewable sources is around 3.5 dollars per kg or green hydrogen as of today whereas from fossil fuels it is hovering around 
पॉइंट सेवन टू वन डॉलर पर के जी सो इट इज फ्रम लाइक नॉन रेन्यूएबल सोर्सेस ओनली इट इज लाइक फ्रम ब्राउन हाइड्रोजन इज चीपर वन कंपेर्ड टू ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन एज ऑफ टूडे एट प्रेजेंट ग्लोबली ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन अकाउंट फॉर मोर देन टेन पर्सेंट ऑफ द ग्लोबल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन रॉन्ग इट इज लेस दैन वन पर्सेंट सो आंसर इज नन ऑफ द एब कमिंग टू इच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर ट्रू रिगार्डिंग परचेजिंग मैनेजर्स इंडेक्स आर पी एम ई पी एम ई इज कंपाइल्ड बाई आर बी आई रॉन्ग इट इज कंपाइल्ड बाई स्टैंडर्ड एंड पुअर इट्स ए ग्लोबल इंडेक्स सो फर्स्ट थिंग इज रॉन्ग Purchasing PMI is an index of the prevailing direction of economic trends in manufacturing sector only. Wrong. It is both manufacturing and services. Both manufacturing and services. So second one is also wrong. Third one PMI lower. PMI lower than the previous month means economy is expanding. Wrong. PMI should be more than the previous month. So definitely this is also wrong. Next thing, IIPR index of industrial production is more dynamic than PMI. It is wrong. Uh, <coughs> the thing is, uh, I IIP is more broader when compared to PMI. So, it is more broader because it covers more sectors when compared to PMI. PMI covers the broader industrial sector compared to iip no pmi is more dynamic than iip but it is less broader so 4 and 5 are also wrong so answer is none of the above next thing which of the following statements are true gross tax to gdp ratio over the past 5 years on an average has been stagnated around 10% this is a fact so you have to check you you go to the ministry of finance and check the data because on this basis also on the comparative basis also questions could be asked so gross tax to gdp ratio for the first uh, past 5 years is really stagnant i uh, has stagnated around 10% next thing total net tax to gdp ratio for 5 years average has been stagnated around 7% this is also a fact the difference between gross and net is after uh, giving whatever refunds no gross collections are this includes money to be refundable whereas uh, net tax collections is after refunding what is left that is around 7% of gdp so second one is also correct third one is tax to gdp ratio on an average over the past 5 years has been stagnated around 3.5% so third one is also correct whereas indirect tax to gdp ratio on an average over the past 5 years has been stagnated around 3.5 that is also correct so a b are 1 2 3 4 5 so answer is a so this is a factual question and you should be clear with the data okay next thing which of the following uh, arrange the following in descending order regarding the components of forex reserves so we are as of today we are having around 560 to 570 billion dollars of forex so the highest amount of forex is around 480 to 490 is nothing but foreign currency assets that is nothing but uh, apart from dollar other currencies like pound euro okay japanese yen and other things all these things are part of fca that is, that comes first around 480 to 490 billion dollars next is gold reserves gold reserves are hovering around 40 billion dollars so that comes next next is sdrs SD, so this is around 40 billion dollars this is around 480 to 490 okay so sdrs are hovering around 18 billion dollars okay and reserve position in imf is hovering around 5.5 billion dollars okay so answer is 3 c 3124 Three one two four. That is the answer. Answer is C. Coming to next thing, which of the following statements are true? National Food Security Act 
where center dis disperse food grains to benefactors based on the priority sector household survey conducted by the central government please understand that it is based on the priority household survey only but it is conducted by the respective state governments not by central government so first statement is wrong next thing is the grains that were distributed through nfsa and prime pmgky prime ministers garib kalyan yojana by center was more than two third of the grains that are procured under msp this is wrong it is around one third so uh, one third of the one third of the total grains that are procured under uh, msp route no that are being distributed using these two schemes next thing under pmgky center and northeast states had shared the burden in the ratio of 90 is to 10 whereas other states in the ratio of 50 is to 50 this is also wrong why because under pmgky the center was sharing around almost like 97 percent of the total cost has been borne by center itself under pmgky so this is also wrong and this is also wrong the answer is d none of the above so next thing coming to which of the following imports are inelastic in respect to government uh, respect to india so inelastic imports are those things irrespective of your scenario whether uh, you have like a uh, huge amount of forex or you have less amount of forex these kind of things are being imported or there is a continuous demand for these kind of commodities so one thing first one is crude oil around 80 to 80 pay, 80 to 85 percent of our oil demands are our crude oil demands are met through imports so it can't be changed in the near future so first one is correct second thing cooking oil around another 80 75 to 80 percent of our total demand is like born through import from countries like indonesia malaysia and others so palm oil cooking oil and other oils also more or less we are dependent on external countries so this is also like completely inelastic third thing gold every every year we import around 100 tons of gold okay so this is huge amount so and this is nothing but almost 99 percent of the total gold that is being consumed in the country and it is also inelastic because there is huge demand for gold especially because of lack of other instruments for savings or investments middle class and lower middle class and poor people generally tend to purchase more gold as a kind of a safe zone or safe investment in the case of need so answer is one two and three next thing which of the following are true regarding the term pump priming pump priming in economic terms the thing is pump priming is the action taken by the government to stimulate an economy usually during or after recessionary period so that is nothing but actually this is the correct term because under pump priming government pump more money and to stimulate the economy and to give lot of support to growth so first one is correct next thing pump priming refers to the collective stimulatory measures taken by the government by undertaking higher expenditure definitely why because the moment government starts spending more money it incurs more expenditure at times it takes money from the corresponding federal bank or reserve bank also so second one is also correct pump priming refers to the collective stimulatory measures taken by the government by undertaking tax cuts definitely why because under pump priming it wants to like stimulate growth so it it bites the bullet by decreasing taxes so that more money will be available for uh, companies as well as public to spend to enhance growth so answer is a b uh, 1 2 and 3 answer is a next thing which of the following statements are correct renewable energy capacity in india increased by 250 percent between 2014 and 2021 so this is correct next thing globally india ranks fourth in renewable energy capacity and wind power and fifth in solar power capacity this is also correct these are all factual questions but you should have 
a statistical analysis of what is happening of each and every energy sector third thing as of 2022 india central renewable capacity including hydro stood at 165 gigawatts representing 40% of the overall installed power capacity that is also correct india wants to further enhance or boost up this capacity that is the view of the country so 1 2 and 3 are correct the answer is it's a factual question a next thing which of the following statements are true deflation is a decrease in general price levels throughout an economy while disinflation is what happens when price inflation slows down temporarily so in deflation what happens is that instead of prices are growing prices level comes down so if this is like zero price okay in inflation this is what happens in deflation this is what happens okay so de- deflation is a decrease in general price levels throughout an economy while disinflation is what happens when price inflation s- slows down temporarily so same graph if this is here if this comes like this or still inflation is there if this is zero inflation is there that means when compared to previous uh, year or previous quarter there is still enhanced growth of or enhanced increase in prices are there but it did not become negative so well deflation is what happens when price inflation slows down temporarily so that is what is disinflation this is nothing but this term is called disinflation so this is correct okay so first one is correct next thing deflation which is the opposite of inflation is mainly caused by shifts in demand and supply supply and demand this is correct why because when there is no demand at all automatically prices will fall down below zero or below the cost of production or whatever okay disinflation shows the rate of change of inflation over time the inflation rate is declining over time but it remains positive so this is also correct so answer is 1 2 and 3 a is correct next thing which of the following lead to increase in cost push inflation so if cost push inflation is occurring what are the things that are going to affect as mentioned here first thing <coughs> or how inflation is affected by increase in cost of commodities or what factors enhances or decreases the cost of commodities or cost of services leading to cost push inflation first one is defective supply chain definitely defective supply chain leads to increase in cost because lot of proliferation loss lot of wastage will be there leading to increase in prices second thing increase in indirect taxes definitely it enhances cost of uh, commodities and goods because indirect taxes impact rich and poor in the same manner unlike direct taxes if uh, a country is following progressive taxation definitely direct taxes will have more impact on poor when compared to rich uh, more impact on rich when compared to poor so coming to increase in indirect taxes definitely this will impact the cost of commodities next thing is depreciation of currency the movement currency depreciation dip, depreciates especially in a country like india where like we have discussed above we have a lot of inelastic imports like oil and palm oil definitely when currency is depreciating earlier for, let us assume for 1 dollar the rupee is 50 now for 1 dollar the rupee is 100 but you import crude oil in dollars earlier also 100 dollars now also let us assume uh, let us assume each kg 1 dollar only oh, 1 dollar of like uh, palm oil palm oil 1 kg is 1 dollar automatically now earlier people had to pay 50 rupees now they are shelling out 
definitely depreciation of the currency is also imp impacting the increase in cost so three also correct so answer is one two and three a is correct the next one is which of the following strategies would result in taming inflation so how inflation could be tamed first one import commodities that are short in supply definitely that will tame inflation to an extent so definitely importing commodities that are in short supply would address this issue to an extent next decrease exports see if we are exporting let us assume now wheat there is a lot of demand because of ukraine russia crisis but if we export lot of wheat definitely there will be huge crunch or huge uh, like uh, vacuum would be created for uh, uh, for availability of wheat leading to lot of increase in inflation so decrease in exports is also correct next government may put a check on hoarding and speculation this will definitely work out as a strategy fourth one distribution through pds so the moment if you are able to distribute commodities through public distribution system definitely it will uh, lead to decrease in prices because now the uh, commodities especially essential commodities are available at far cheaper rate when compared to what is being uh, traded in the market definitely these all four strategies will lead to taming inflation so these are the answers to the questions that we have discussed with this i'm like our uh, discussion pertaining to current affairs questions or uh, economy questions are completed thank you we shall meet next week bye